winger, Spaniard, Real Madrid, a sense Lucas Vasquez. Hello and welcome to the Gooner Talk, back again with you guys for another show, for another episode of our Tactical Breakdown series in which we look at the players that Arsenal could, should, maybe, fingers crossed, hopefully will sign for Arsenal this summer. Uh, and it's, it's, it's nice because I'm recording a couple of videos basically uh, in lieu of what is going to be a nice weekend for myself. I'll be away in the New Forest, but I want to keep you guys uh, as well informed as possible over the weekend, so I'm pre-recording uh, a couple of videos for you. Uh, that you'll be seeing today, Saturday, uh, and tomorrow's on Sunday as well. Obviously, you hopefully you would have already checked out yesterday's video, which was a season preview with Hugh Wizzy, and we talked about uh, a lot of things that are going ahead with terms of transfers, where we see Arsenal moving next season, uh, and we got Hugh's thoughts on all of those kind of things. So please go check that out. And if you're enjoying the channel, of course, please give it a like, subscribe and turn those notifications on so you never miss a show. But of course, the reason you're here is to get the breakdown of Lucas Vasquez, who has been linked with a €32 million Euro move from Real Madrid to Arsenal. Now, Lucas Vasquez has obviously been at Real Madrid for quite a while. Um, he is what you're going to hear very soon from a good friend of mine, uh, not particularly a Galactico. Uh, more a player which they sort of bought and then just developed uh, from a younger age and has stayed there and been sort of a utility player for them. Um, but I'm not going to steal too much of the guy's thunder that I'm going to let speak in a moment. But let's just have a quick background on the guy. 29, uh, sorry, 28 years old, uh, quite old uh, for a player of his level to still be at Real Madrid. So it surprises me he's stayed there this long without being uh, a hugely successful player. He just sort of has been this, this squad player that's always sort of been around in that Real Madrid team. And last season he made 47 appearances, which is, is a lot, is a lot for Real Madrid, but not too many of them were starts. And in those appearances he scored five goals and got four assists. Not really the scoring or assisting record that you'd see uh, lighting up Arsenal's Twitter sphere uh, and getting people excited. Um, but before I go on any further and go into the guy's stats, I, of course, I like to give you uh, the best possible breakdown as I can. And obviously, that is with the help of some football experts. And for today, uh, there is no one better, in my opinion, to get the thoughts of but from Sky Sports, uh, Spanish pundit who obviously used to run uh, the La Liga weekly podcast, now runs his podcast still with Terry Gibson, which you'll find the link for in the description. And that is John Driscoll. So I'm going to hand over to John now and he's going to tell you all he knows about Lucas Vasquez. So what's the opposite of a Galactico? Whatever that is, that's what Lucas Vasquez is. He's all about the hard work. He was. He came back to Real Madrid having come through the ranks at Real Madrid, went off to Espanyol, did okay, did well, came back to Real Madrid and the reason they wanted him was the, the contrast from the BBC. So you had uh, Cristiano Ronaldo, who wouldn't track back. You had Gareth Bale, who didn't really work hard enough. And you had Karim Benzema, who was the main centre-forward. So the contrast to that was Lucas Vazquez, who was all about the hard work up and down that right flank. And Zidane really liked him for that reason. So he was a surprise hit first time round under Zidane. Zidane is back. They've spent an absolute fortune now under a lot of pressure to do so because of the utter failure last season for Real Madrid. So Hazard there, Jovic has come in, they've still got Isco, they've still got Ceballos, who they want rid of, Asensio, I mean, the list goes on, Rodrigo they paid a lot of money for, a young Brazilian, they've already got uh, Vinicius there, they need to play all of these guys, these are all in that front three, if they're going to play a 4-3-3, because you've still got the midfield of Kroos, Modric, uh, Casemiro, and uh, Valverde, the, the youngster who might be getting some more football this season, so there is simply no room in that Real Madrid team for Lucas Vazquez given all those players, and surely you can't spend all that money on those players and be paying the kind of wages and still be getting Lucas Vasquez in the team. Uh, so for me, the kind of fee that Arsenal have been linked with paying is just is simply too much for what is essentially a solid, hard-working player. He'd do OK in the Premier League. you quite like him. He would never upset anybody. He'd put, he'd put the graft in. But with Arsenal's limited resources, I'm not sure that you want to spend a significant sum of that on a player who is essentially a hard-working right-sided midfielder who can who can do a job as a right wing back and desperate you know, desperate measures can fill in at a right back. So for me, it seems a, it seems a lot of money for a, a non-Galactico. 
So that was John's thoughts there on Lucas Vasquez. Uh, very hard-working player, as you can tell. And if you want to hear more of John's thoughts, you can still check him out on, whilst it may not longer be with Sky anymore, but it is certainly carrying on in full force, the La Liga Weekly podcast, at La Liga underscore weekly on Twitter. John, you can find at Driscoll FC, uh, and you can go watch their two-part special on a lot of La Liga transfer targets. If you like your transfers, like I'm sure you do if you're watching this show, it's definitely worth going and check that out with the link in the description. So please, please do. Um, but yeah, let's carry on talking about Lucas Vasco. So what John said, he's a very, very hard-working player. He runs up and down the pitch. He gets stuck and he gets involved. His defensive stats are great, which we're going to come on to in a second. Um, but basically, to the fact that we play 32 million for a guy like Lucas Vasquez, who ultimately would just do a job, as the, uh, the, is what it basically is called in these days, talking about players. It's not the player that we want. Now, I'm going to run through some uh, some statistics to back up that theory with the player that obviously Arsenal are being linked to heavily and have already submitted to bid him for, and that is, of course, Wilfred Zaha. Now, you can expect to see uh, in the stats that are in front of you now that uh, his attacking stats do not match up to the Ivorians. I mean, Zaha's got higher uh, offensive duels and success, higher dribbling uh, and higher success in his dribbling. His touches into the box are higher and his progressive runs are more than that of Vasquez. And you would expect that from someone like Wilfred Zaha. The amount of stats that he does and the amount of running that he does just completely outweighs that in a forward momentum uh, variation compared to Lucas Vasquez but at the same time Lucas does get about the pitch I'm not going to spend this entire show uh, criticising the Spaniard because he is an extremely likeable player for what he gives the team he gets stuck in he goes and moves the ball forwards he plays key passes in between himself and his attacking and more deeper lying midfielders and he's a real linchpin on that right hand side you can see from the heat map on your screen that he is a right-sided midfielder or a right winger and as Johnson he can deputise even at a right wing back slot if need be but Arsenal don't need this sort of utility player. They need someone who's going to come in, especially for the money that's being quoted, who's going to come in and really take the team by the scruff of the neck and move them forwards. In terms of his passing then, you can again see that uh, it's, it's slightly mixed between the two uh, passes. Uh, actually, the amount of passes he makes and the accuracy of those is higher for Vasquez compared to Zaha. The number of long passes he makes is higher, but Zaha's are more accurate. The through passes he makes and the accuracy of them, again, leaning Vasquez's favour uh, and his crossing, the number of crosses that he tries, again, leads in, in the Spaniards' favour. But the accuracy side of those sides with Zaha. But then again, Vasquez takes over for the pass into the final third, both in numbers and accuracy. And it's the same story for his passes into the box. And ironically, the amount of passes he receives on the pitch as well. Even though you think of Zaha as a player that you'd pass the ball to and expect him to run off and do what he does best. And it's his defensive side of the game where obviously he comes out on top in a lot of the statistics which you can see. And I'll leave on the screen for a second so you can take those in. He really does beat Zaha in a lot of those areas. And whilst we're talking about a player that beats Zaha in his defensive stats and he beats Zaha in a lot of the passing stats... It's funny that we're still not talking about him in a way in which we know that he'd come in and light up our team because he's just not the type of player that we need or want for that position. If we want someone to come in and back up our front line and be supported by some of the best passing that goes in in the Premier League from that creative standpoint that should be at Arsenal, and hopefully we'd see that with the likes of Nabil Fakir possibly coming into the team and with some obviously extra creativity from a new fullback in Kieran Tierney and a returning fullback in Hector Bellerin then you want to see someone who can run in behind, really be clinical in the finishing uh, and be a starter for, for, for a big team rather than someone who's just thought of as a bit of a backup player can come in and do a job. We don't want that. We want someone who's going to take those games to the opposition and that guy is definitely Wilfred Zaha. So it goes to show that even though the stats lean definitely in the passing areas and the defensive areas in Lucas Vasquez's favour heavily, you can't always just look to stats as something to say, Yes, this guy is clearly better because we know that Zaha is definitely much more what we need at Arsenal compared to Lucas Vasquez. Uh, and that's why in tomorrow's video, in which I'm going to take a look at Malcolm, that he's more of a player that we could be looking to to take the, the ball and, and take it to the opposition and show flashes of brilliance. Uh, and again, you'll be hearing from John and his thoughts on the Brazilian in tomorrow's show. I hope you've enjoyed this breakdown. Uh, tell me your thoughts in the comment section below what you think of Lucas Vasquez, because there are always some fantastic comments. Tell me what you think about the Spaniard. Is he someone that actually, based on statistics, 
could do a job for us. But I'm assuming that most of you would agree with me in thinking that we need someone more technical, a little bit more electric, a little bit more fiery, and someone who's going to really take the ball to the opposition. We'll see you again tomorrow for the next one. And as always, up the Arsenal.